Apple just had their big uh, WWDD, the WWDC event, and I had originally planned just to make this video a sort of roundup of all the stuff that they talked about because that's usually what happens. We knew there was potentially gonna be a new product, but we didn't know that it was gonna be quite the product that it seems as though it's going to be. I, for one, at least had no conception of how big Apple Vision Pro has the potential to be. If Apple delivers on everything that they talked about in this event today with Apple Vision Pro, then we'll talk about it. But first, let's thank our sponsors today, Shockflow, for sponsoring this video. More on them coming up in just a few minutes. First, we'll go through, we'll give a little rundown of everything that we saw here today, and then we'll get to talking about Apple Vision Pro, which yeah, we'll get to that. But just very quickly, 15 inch MacBook Air, pretty much the same as the 13 inch MacBook Air, a little bit more expensive and a little bit bigger. Mac Studio gets M2 Max and M2 Ultra chips, which makes it 25% faster than this and 50% faster than that and yada, yada, yada. Fast, $19.99 to start as was the uh, Mac Studio last time around. And then you can get it with the M2 Ultra, which is two M2 Max chips put together. So it'll be twice of everything that it already was with the M2 Max. You can take it up to 192 gigabytes of unified memory, which is more unified memory than anyone I, that's beyond conception, but you can do it. It would be wildly expensive, probably cost more than the Mac Studio itself to get to 192 gigahertz. And then everybody's been saying, oh, no Mac Pro, there's not gonna be a Mac Pro, they're not gonna announce a Mac Pro. Well, they did. <laughs> And it looks like the Mac Pro from 2019 with this sort of like three-dimensional wormhole design and all that. The biggest difference with the Mac Pro this time around is that it comes with M2 Ultra to start with and it's highly customizable. It has, how many, it has, it has, six PCIe Gen 4 ports, seven afterburners built in or something like that. Anyway, it, it's very fast and it starts at $7,000. Unless you need PCI slots for your workflow, be that audio, video, whatever, I don't know who's gonna buy this when the Mac Studio is, yeah. Anyway, then they went through software, iOS 17, lots of cool new features, AirDrop, intelligent keyboard, journals, a standby mode sounds really cool. And I'll go through, if you wanna see a full video about all the software stuff, let me know and I'll make a full video. Otherwise, I'm just gonna kinda of roll through it here. Uh, iPad OS 17, you've got widgets on the home screen as opposed to whatever, uh, and they're interactive. You can interact with the widgets on the home screen without going into the app, which is kinda of cool. Mac OS Sonoma. Mac OS Sonoma has pretty much all the same features. New screensavers, widgets on the desktop, the kind of wallpapery, kind of widgety thing, and the widgets are now interactive on the desktop as well. And then they have a new gaming mode, which gives CPU and GPU priority to the games and also reduces latency to the AirPods as well as uh, the controller that you might be using because those are all Bluetooth things which can have some latency. So you get the best gaming experience that you have. And then they brought out Hideo Kojima, whose most recent game, Death Stranding, is uh, gonna get a director's cut on Mac OS. So they're starting to push gaming. And I think I know why. I think I know why. <laughs> we'll talk again, we'll talk about it in a second. There's also video conferencing and Safari got some updates and there's you know, TVOS got some new things. And then for the first time in a long, long time, we got one more thing. But before we get to the one more thing, let's get this message from our sponsor. Folks at Shockflow have decided to send me this portable charger. While I don't drive an electric car, my beautiful wife does. Say hello, beautiful wife. Hello, beautiful wife. Action shot. Comes with a wall mount. We have the shock flow going into the BMW. Here's our old charger that came with the car. This is only a level one charger. The shock flow is both level one and level two, which is much faster. Thanks to shock flow for sponsoring the video. All applicable links are down in the description below. Go check it out and get yourself a new fast charger. Thanks again to shock flow. Now, one more thing. 
The one more thing today is what everybody really thought. I'm, everybody thought we were going to get this, and we've been waiting for this. They were AR goggles, AR glasses, this, that, or the other thing. If you're not familiar with what the one more thing thing is, Steve Jobs used to do these Apple events, and then he'd hold the most important thing to the end, and then he'd say, oh yeah, and one more thing, and he'd introduce, say, the iPod or the iPhone or something like that. But they haven't done one more thing in a long time. I don't think Tim Cook has ever done a one more thing, but he broke out the one more thing today, and the one more thing was Apple Vision Pro. And it kind of looks like, as they were doing the, the beauty shot of the product, it kind of looked like an Apple Watch for the face. It has it's goggles, and it's got a digital crown on it, and it's got a band that kind of looks like an Apple Watch band, and it's all aluminum, so it does look kind of like a, du a double Apple Watch for the face. Okay. I have tried just about every VR thing that there is out there. I've, I had an original Oculus Rift. I had the Rift S. I have tried the Quest. I haven't tried the Quest Pro. But my experience with VR, I had the PSVR 1. I haven't gotten the PSVR 2 yet, and I don't think I'm going to after I saw this. My experience with VR is that it's always really cool the VR is always really cool, but it can't do the things as well as it wants to. It wants to be virtual desktop, but the virtual desktop is weird. There's always some screen door effect or like some kind of some kind of visual impairment that makes it not as great. VR up to this point has been almost there, but not quite. And now we should say that Apple Vision Pro is not strictly a VR device. Apple Vision Pro is an augmented reality device. Augmented reality is something different than VR. It's augmented reality. And the closest that I've come to is these Nreal glasses, that the Nreal Air that were sent to me a while back. I have a video. I'll link it down in the description below so you can check that out. These are very cool. They have USB-C and you can plug them into your phone or your iPad or anything like that. They have their own app that'll do some virtual desktop stuff and play some games. Basically, it's sort of puts the screen that you have plugged into it up in front of you as like a, well, they, they say it's like a, as if it were a 200 inch screen or something. And it does okay. It's also very stylish, <laughs> but, but uh, it isn't, isn't fully realized. And that's kind of the whole deal with virtual reality and augmented reality up to this point. Virtual reality has done some gameplay really well, but when it comes to doing anything other than that, it's pretty limited. Apple Vision Pro. I knew that they were coming out with it, but I really hadn't thought about, well, what's it gonna be? It's basically gonna be a replacement for, or an augmentation of, or a like a, like a, a heads up display of every screen that you interact with if it's a Macintosh or an Apple related screen. So they showed off things like watching movies, traveling on an airplane, that you can turn the digital crown and sort of black out things around you, but then if you have video conferencing, everybody from your video conference can be up there and you can talk to them and they'll see a virtual representation of you that when you set the thing up, it scans your face and then it creates a virtual you that they can see without the glasses on. For security, it even has iris scanning technology. Iris scanning technology, we are fully into sci-fi territory now. I was thinking of the, the movie Minority Report based on a Philip K. Dick story, but Minority Report, the movie, is what you're probably more familiar with and how they did all this like 3D stuff. And they had 3D movies. You can make 3D photos and movies with this. And even though you have like lenses in your face, it will show people your eyes. And then if you're watching a movie or you're doing something and you're you're doing something and, and you're busy, it will show like that you're busy and they can't see your eyes. But as soon as you talk, your eyes will pop out and you will be able to see the person because there will be a, a screen there, but the person will already be there as well. It's really hard to describe exactly what it is that Apple is proposing here. And I have never known Apple to come out with a full on, like this was a very long presentation about what this is and how it works and how they built it and all that kind of stuff. I've never seen them go this much in depth and not deliver on what they're talking about. They're calling it the world's first spatial computing platform, which means they've written an entirely new 
kind of operating system, which they're calling Vision OS, for an entirely new kind of computing device. This is the thing that I'm most excited about, is the fact that Apple came up with the iPod, and it wasn't the first of all the MP3 players, but it was by far the best and the most well-realized and the most sort of future-looking of the MP3 players at the time. Then they came up with the iPhone, which took what a smartphone was at that point and took it way further than anybody ever had and revolutionized the smartphone world. Now they're doing the same thing for a screen that goes on your face, that's not a screen. How did they do it? Well, it's the, they, they've got two chips in there, an R1 chip that's for real-time sensing. They've got 12 cameras and all this, this like visual eye-tracking stuff, three lenses that sort of pancake together to give you super high-definition visuals, 4K. I think it was like 23 million pixels or something. I'll have to go back and look. They've, they've got this R1 chip that they built to do all the real-time processing for all of the different pieces of information that are coming in to recreate and, and augment what's going on in the physical world as well as with the screens. They've got an M2 chip in there that's doing the rest of the, this, the, rest of the processing. My big question, since I wear glasses, was how are they going to uh, accommodate the people who wear glasses? And they are going to work with Zeiss to create prescription lenses that you can have in there. Uh, that's something that VR has done as well. It can be kind of expensive. I have all kinds of eye problems. Maybe I just get contacts for when I'm using this. But the biggest takeaway for me is this. Apple Vision Pro, if it is what they say it is, is a total game changer. It's the game changer that I know I've been waiting for, many people have been waiting for, ever since the smartphone market got kind of stale and smartphone innovation kind of flattened out. There's nothing else that can do what Apple claims Apple Vision Pro can do nothing. Apple has worked for years to create something that is unlike anything else. It is going to be a total paradigm shift across the board for how we use screens, how we use physical space. I mean, you can watch movies in this thing in a in a virtual cinema and black out everything and all you're doing is like sitting on the couch. It's gonna be kind of weird. It's gonna be kind of weird you're just sitting on the couch there are so many applications for how this is going to work. Apple Vision Pro is game changing. And if it were any other company, I would say this is a little overly ambitious. There's no way they're gonna pull this off, but Apple, I think is gonna pull it off. The fly in the ointment for many people is gonna be the fact that this has a forward looking price tag as well, $3,500, $3,499. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. I could almost buy a Mac Studio Ultra, but I'm going to tell you this. I will be there day one on the Apple Store with my finger on the buy button, ready to get this. Because I have not been as excited about a piece of tech as I am about this new Apple Vision Pro right now. I wanted to capture this excitement uh, right after the event because I, this is what I love about tech. I love when science fiction becomes science reality, right? And Apple Vision Pro takes so many things that people have visualized in their minds in science fiction and brings it to the table and also seems to have the potential to make it 100% useful and, and shifting the paradigm of how we work, how we play, how we interact with our, our memories, like just crazy amounts of stuff. There's gonna be so much more about this that I wanna talk about, but I just wanted to capture my initial sort of like, <clears throat> Let me know what you think about Apple Vision Pro down in the comments below. I'm gonna be there day one, will you? We'll talk about it. Till next time, I'm out.